Hello fellas, welcome back. So in this section, we are going to learn how to create periodic church lists. There are three ways of creating periodic church lists and we're going to take a look at two of such ways here. And then later on in the course, when we introduce more parameters for our thread control block, we implement the third method of creating periodic threads. So in this section, we're going to explore two methods. One method, to add a periodic thread to your Schechler to make it into a periodic Schechler is to declare that thread as, as a background thread. So simply by creating an interrupt service routine for a timer to always call a particular function, that function is called periodically. So we can create a background thread and initialize a timer. And then within the interrupt service routine of the timer, we can put our periodic thread there and that gives us a form of periodic Schechler that works alongside our round robin Schechler. So that's way number one. Number two is to change our Schechler to actually schedule the thread periodically. The third method, of course, would be to create a thread control block, which takes into account the periodic thread and its resources. And we'll look at that third method later on, but not in this section. So I'm going to start with a simple round robin Schechler, the one we created the first time. And then I'm going to initialize timer four and then create thread number four and put thread number four into the interrupt service routine of timer four. So I'm going to do that now. So I'm just simply going to create a new project. I'll click over here, new new vision project. And then I've created this new folder for this project. I'm calling it periodic Schechler. So I'll call the product, uh, the project periodic Schechler as well. Periodic Schechler V1, and let's call V1. And I'm still working with the STM32 board. So it's the same thing. It's all Cortex M, but I shall upload the already complete project for all the three boards we're using, which are the Texas instrument board, the nuclear board, and then the disco board. So you can just run the code. So then, I'll choose my MCU here, STM32 F411VET. And I'll and I'll select it, I'll click OK. And then it brings me over here and under CMSYS I select core. And under device I select startup. And then because we are going to use our board support package over here, we're going to use the timer that we created in our board support package. And we're also going to use the probe to verify whether indeed the thread is working at a set period. So because of that, we need to initialize the STM32 cube hall. And our board support package, of course, requires the ADC, the GPIO, the SPI, the timer. And I'm just going to click resolve so that it would resolve all other dependencies. And then it gives me these two these two options and I'll come over here and select classic and then OK. Right. So that is done. Let me see. I'll just open this up a bit. Then I'll close here. And my target currently is the STM32 F4 board. So I'll just call it STM32 F4. And um and the source group here, I'll rename the first one to OS kernel. Um, close. I just want to rename. I'll open this for more space. And then OS kernel. And I'll create another group. I'll right click here, add group. And the second one is, is going to be user. And this third one. And this third one could be OS, could be OSBSP to stand for board support package. Right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the kernel that we wrote for the round robin church lab and place it into the folder of this project. And then I'll come back to you vision and import all the files. I'll also copy the board support package we created and put it in the same folder of the project and import it into this folder. So I'll do that now. So as I said, I'll just paste the files here. I copied the main file as well. So now it exists in the project folder. And I'm going to go back to UVision and then I'll import it. I'll open the kernel 
and then show all files like this and then I'll add them double click double click then I'll click here to close I'll come to the user and then I'll import the main.c double click close and then OSPSP I import the board support package and then I close right so I'll just expand and verify that we've got all of them here I can double click this to open and um, I've changed the quanta size here to one check if your quanta size is still 10 let's just change it to one and and what we're going to do um, let's see yeah I run the experiment already so yeah what I did is I took the normal initialization from the from the round robin program and then I added hole in it so you have to add this line hole in it probe in it and we are going to initialize timer 4 and start interrupt for timer 4 you add this as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to create a fourth thread and this fourth thread is simply the interrupt handler or the interrupt service routine of timer 4 what I did was change the um, the period of timer 4 to 100 milliseconds so the interrupt of timer 4 is going to occur every 100 milliseconds like this over here the period of timer 4 is changed to 100 milliseconds so if we have a thread here this thread is going to be um, given the processor time every 100 milliseconds so I did this and to create the, um, the thread we just copy the interrupt handler of timer 4 which already exists over here this is the interrupt handler of timer 4 if we were using timer 5 we shall we will copy the um the interrupt handler of timer 5 so this is copied and once you copy it you don't want to have two copies of it you can um just just comment it out and then bring the copied version to the main because we're keeping all the threads to main so you can think of this as thread number three this is thread two um, we've got thread one here and then we've got thread zero here so this is thread number three and once you bring the thread you just clean everything and then leave the whole timer IRQ handler and then we put in the probe number three so that we can verify whether indeed the thread is clocking at the frequency that we've set it to be and the frequency we've set it to be is 10 Hertz because we said 100 milliseconds 100 milliseconds equals 10 Hertz so because probe CH3 is toggling then the the oscilloscope should read 50% duty cycle and 5 Hertz right because 100 Hertz will give us 100% duty cycle but because we're toggling on and off at the same rate is 50% duty cycle so if the oscilloscope tells us that it's 5 Hertz meaning indeed our timer settings is quite accurate and this thread is a periodic thread occurring at 10 Hertz it just so happened that we're testing with this toggling arm um, code if we were to have a set of instructions here to execute every 10 Hertz that's exactly what would happen so um, once you've done all of this and you've verified this and we can rebuild I'll just before I do that um, we need to of course set our debugger and I'll come over here change xtor to 16 then debugger is the ST debugger I'll click this drop down menu ST link settings and then flash download reset and run and then OK and then OK then I'll click over here to rebuild and it says one error let's see undefined symbol OS Schechler launch okay so the program the problem we've got this is of course we've not added the um, the assembly version of the kernel remember the kernel has OS kernel dot C dot H and dot S we didn't copy the assembly version so let's do that now so I've copied the kernel.s, I'll just paste it over here. And as you can see, OS kernel.s, it's added over here. And I'm going to go back to my project and I'm going to import it into the project by double clicking here. And then here it is. I add, then I close. I rebuild. 
it's no problem the only warnings the warnings we get in is mostly because we've declared some variables that we're not using it's fine what I'm going to do next is turn on the oscilloscope and then connect my probe to probe 3 like we defined over here and see whether indeed the oscilloscope tells me that the frequency is 5 Hertz and I already explained why we should see 5 Hertz it's because we're toggling the pin and toggling means there's just 50% duty cycle and 50% duty cycle corresponds to half of the period being high and the other half being low so because we turn on and off then we should see this so if we see 5 Hertz on the oscilloscope and 50% duty cycle meaning indeed our thread here is, um, is set with a period of 100 milliseconds which is 10 Hertz so um, let's take a look at that now so this is my setup over here as you can see the ground leg of the oscilloscope is connected to the ground pin of the microcontroller board and the um, and the actual probe of the oscilloscope is connected to PC3 which corresponds to probe channel 3 like we declared in our code and let's take a look at the measurement itself so there's the measurements going on we've got 50% duty cycle we've got 5 Hertz for frequency so this means that our periodic thread is executing according to the settings we implemented in the code and that's very good um, so in the next lesson we shall take a look at the other method of implementing periodic scheduling and then I'll see you there bye